Hello class, I'll be talking about plane shapes today again, but this time we'll be talking about the area of plane shapes. Now, I will start with the quadrilaterals. What are the quadrilaterals? They are the four-sided shapes, rectangle. For the rectangle, you have a shape that has length, breadth, two opposite sides being equal. The area of a rectangle equals to length times breadth, where L equals to length and B equals to breadth. And sometimes, it will call this breadth width. Let me splash this and call it width. So when you hear the word width, width can also be referred to as the breadth of the rectangle. So the area of the rectangle is called, is simple as, is simply put as a length times breadth. Multiply the length and the breadth of that shape. How the letters that are just 26, okay, in number, can produce up to like 44 sounds. And we've got the vowels and we've got the consonant sound, okay? So as for the vowel sounds, they are 20 in number. Now for the consonant sound, they are 24 in number. Now these vowel sounds, they are even subdivided into two types. We've got the monotones and the diphthongs. The monotones are just one sound. While the diphthongs are the combination of two monotones. Then as for the consonant sound, we've already treated the silent sound, okay? So the only thing we're going to treat is uh, do, are those sounds that are actually pronounced even when you have the letters there. So I want you to follow me to class and let's have something written on the board. Let's look at those letters that obviously produce each of the sounds that you'll be introduced to. Hello everyone. We are about to discuss questions in, involving the rhythm of buses. These questions were taken from our previous classes and um, we're about to get through them. Let's go. The, the, the one question. Masses M1 and M2 at the 20 centimeter and 65 centimeter mass respectively of a uniform meter room freely suspended at its center of gravity. If the room balances horizontally, determine the ratio M2 to M1. So what we do is make a sketch of a meter room. The meter room should be calibrated from zero to 100 centimeters. And this one, we are told, freely suspended at the center of gravity, okay? So the center of gravity for a uniform meter room should be at 50 centimeters. Now, we have masses M1 and M2 placed at the 20 centimeter mark and stress in that mark, respectively. So for the mass M1, it's going to be at the 20 centimeter mark, which is to be on this side of the uh, meter room. So we have that as M1. Then M2 will be on the 65 centimeter mark, that's after 50. We have our M2 here. Okay, so that's M2 now. The question is for us to decide um, the ratio of M2 to M1. How do we get that? Now, for this rule to be in balance, as, we, as the question says, then we are told here that the sum of the moments about a particular point should be zero. And so we look at M1, what kind of moment does it describe about this pivot? You would know that it's anti-clockwise. Okay. While M2 would describe a clockwise moment about the pivot. So let's quickly add the moment itself. But what's the rule? We can say total ACW moments equals total CW moments. This is another way of saying the sum of the moments about the pivot is zero. Because ultimately, if you decide to add all the moments on one side of the equation, you would have to put positive sign on the, uh, the anti-clockwise moment and negative sign on the clockwise moment and that will ultimately give you a zero result. All right, so but you can also address it as I have written, total anti-clockwise moment equals total clockwise moment. Most students refer it this way. Good day, students. The last time we met, we have been on Carbon and his compound and we are going to continue from where we stopped last time. 
Now, last time before we parted, I told us that we're going to be looking at the properties of diamond, the properties of graphite, the uses of diamond, the uses of graphite. And that will take us to the destructive distortion of code that we're going to see as we move on today. Uh, diamond, as it where well, we know that it is, it is, it is used as jewelry, you know, but let me begin with being used as abrasive. Diamond is used as abrasive because it is very dense and hard. So we use it as abrasive to sharpen very hard tools. Good day, viewers. I'm happy to be with you today. Uh, once again, we have a very interesting topic to treat today uh, in financial accounting, talking about accounting concepts and conventions. Before a student will start posting into relevant books of accounts, it is very important that he or she is acquainted with the concepts and convention in accounting. What are accounting concepts? They are the principles taken into consideration in preparing accounting statements. Once you prepare accounting statements, it must take into consideration the accounting uh, concept. On the other hand, accounting conventions are standard upon which financial statement is uh, prepared. Because when any financial report is you know, given at, it will be based on a particular standard. If such standard is not adhered to, or this, if such standards are not adhered to, then it is not a proper uh, accounting statement or financial statement, as the case may be. 